We're always hearing that we live in an information age. We hear about the information superhighway, about broadband, about 500 channels and so on. It all sounds exciting, but we don't hear very much about the kind of information we'll be getting. Who controls it? Who does it serve? And how much variety and diversity will it really give us? We are told that uh, the greater diversity of channels makes it possible to target audiences to uh, serve the needs of minority audiences, people who have un not been served before. Unfortunately, this is not the way it works. Advertising supported uh, channels uh, seek the largest possible audience, so that when anybody talks about the multiplicity of channels, ask the question, what is being provided? What is the content of those channels? And that is what touches people's lives. It's not the channels that matter, it's the content that is delivered through those channels, and that is the question. The fact of the matter is that there is no profit in diversity. Profit is in standardization, in monopolization, in globalization. When the Telecommunications Act of 1996 was, was uh, rushed through Congress and signed by the President in January 1996, this bill changes the ground rules that create the cultural environment of every home. That it makes it possible for a single company to legally control 35% of the national market. Nothing like this has ever been dreamt of or proposed before. It, three companies can dominate the, the, the cultural environment of our people and much of the rest of the world. Time Warner, Viacom, Rupert Murdoch. Uh, you have three companies with strong vested political interests that can dominate every piece of fiction, drama, and news. When you are essentially working for the global market, you have to consider what kind of a formula will you produce, will you inject in, in your production system that are universally acceptable, that are universally understandable, uh, that require little or no translation, that are essentially image-driven. And of course, the answer is, is either violence or sex or a combination of the two. I thought you said it was peaceful. <laughs> Of course, we know that action programs, which is a code word for violence, are the most prolific and most productive. And the second most productive are programs that parade a kind of explicit sexuality. Baywatch is a good example. There is a, a great international success because of the bikini-clad uh, sex symbols that dominate it. Uh, Power Rangers which is a recent highly successful series. The Power Rangers is playing, or at one point was playing in 80 countries. 300 million children saw it every night. There's not, never been anything like it. Training in a blind obedience to the leader, in violence being the answer to, to our problems that threaten us. Training in messages that undermine the conception of a humane, uh, partnership and of democratic existence. Hollywood-based production dominates uh, well over 50% of the screens of the world. That domination follows the motion picture situation in which American Hollywood movies have, have had this kind of global domination because they're produced for the global market, and they're designed for the global market, and they're highly efficient. And uh, because they are designed in that way, we can sell an hour's worth of this program or this movie for less money than it would cost you to produce one minute of your own. When I have a chance to talk to them, I say, you're not buying cheap entertainment. You're not buying cheap news. You are mortgaging the socialization of your children and the integrity of your country and of your culture and even the sovereignty of your country to a group of global entrepreneurs, mostly based in Hollywood and the United States, who really don't care about your country or about your children, who care, care about maximizing their profits from the global market. What we have to say is, we have studied this situation for many years. We should continue to study to see what changes there are, but we know that it's very stable, it's resistant to change. We have to tackle it as a system and when you have to tackle something as a system, I think the good last thought that one can uh, consider is 
Don't just agonize, organize.